just double yep. check here with you guys. Sweet. Hi. Hey. Yeah. Awesome. Hi, Chris. Hi. Hello. Good to see you guys. <laughs> or see your going? names here. Yeah, awesome. See you again. Yeah, sweet. So um, did you guys have time to do a little work yesterday? Uh, yeah, I did. A little bit, cool. Sweet. Yeah, I also did. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's actually amazing how fast you are, dude. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I see guys working like uh, Grassetti and all those guys. Those guys can crank an entire model like in one night, like with texture and everything. I'm not that fast. <laughs> it feels like you are. It feels like you could complete it in one night. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. So uh, we're going to be, let me share my screen here before I forget because um, sometimes I forget things. Um, so uh, this is the state of the, the model so far. And um, I probably like did a few more tweaks after that video yesterday when I posted and then I went to bed. So that's basically what I have so far. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to be talking about like mostly like secondary forms today. Uh, obviously, like uh, yesterday when I was mentioning like the way I sculpt normally, it's normally like the uh, not like just primary forms, right? I mean, that's just like not blocking just like the, you know, it's like all the primary forms and then going to a next step and doing everything because this is digital art. And with that, we have we are much more flexible than uh, with the clay. So in this case here, you saw when I was sculpting this yesterday, it was basically uh, a primary and secondary all mixed in one. And then when I moved to next steps uh, uh, in a couple of uh, days, when we, uh, actually the the pores and all the fine detail we're going to start like next week. Um, but then uh, that part you're going to notice that I do the same in the next level. So for example, I'm not going to sculpt just the secondary forms and then move to the tertiary. I'm going to be sculpting secondary and tertiary almost at the same time. And then, uh, and then at any time I'm going to be going back and forth, you know, it's like going back to the lowest resolution and tweaking my primary and anything that's necessary, you know, that's the cool thing about like having digital art, you know, it's uh, just like how flexible it, uh, it is. So um, let me just uh, start here. Let me see. I think I found something to show you guys. Let's see. Yeah, let's go back to this website. Okay, let me just move this away here. Uh, and then, then let me move the whole thing here. So yesterday we are looking at this one, but uh, let's open a little bit. Uh, let's see someone. <laughs> yesterday I was talking about the, the, the pores, but obviously like when you get closer to the, the class talking about pores, you're gonna go deeper into that. Just as an example here, uh, let's get her, for example. And someone was asking about like, you know, it's like the pores, we're gonna be doing all this stuff by hand and everything, but uh, you know, it's like how deep we should go if it's like a female in relation to a male. And uh, you can get uh, quite deep sometimes, depending on the person, obviously. And in this case here, I, I would go for something more like this, that's a little bit shallower than what we sculpt normally for for a man, you know, and, uh, but you see like, uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, studies about the types of skin that we're gonna be dealing with. You're gonna see like patterns like this, you're gonna see like those little bubbles, right? Like almost like the, the, the little fat, uh, as, uh, you know, it's like deposits underneath the skin. And then you're gonna see, for example, like those pores more uh, importantly uh, around the, the cheeks, you're gonna see them more visibly. And then when it comes to the nose, you're gonna get like those uh, black heads and everything, but the surface itself in between them is quite smooth, right? Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of work uh, later on uh, next week uh, about like breaking up the surface. So we're gonna be treating, you know, it's like those different parts of the face with, uh, you know, it's like with different types of brushes and techniques we're gonna be using. And, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it's like, it's a lot of uh, things to look at and uh, at the end of the day, there is no way, even if I spend a whole life, I guess, trying to reproduce exactly what happens with the human face, it's, it, there is no, not enough time because everything is so complex, right? Like you can go really closely and everything becomes like, almost like it's a whole project in itself if you want to sculpt everything. But what we do in this class here is normally like we try to paint an impression of someone who's, uh, you know, it's like a, an alive being, right? And uh, we try to capture like the essence of all those things. So that's why, when I sculpt things by hand, I'm not actually trying to match exactly what I'm seeing. Uh, and I'm mostly like idealizing things based on the, the reference that I have. For example, like I, I have like a mental, um, 
uh, library of uh, the types of skin and stuff. And a lot of times I don't even refer too much to the references. But uh, what I do is just like, you know, it's like to look like positions for the, for the wrinkles where those marks are and things like that. And uh, for example, like the areas of transition. So we're going to have an area like this that has no pore whatsoever. And then you're going to make a transition to something that has a lots of pores, right? So all those things are going to be talking later. But uh, just to clarify, I mean, like a, a, as a curiosity, right? Um, uh, yeah, we're going to go much shallower than we, we normally go if we're going to model a female. But in your case, if you're modeling like any type of character, character uh, I'm going to be showing this uh, next, uh, not next week, but I'm going to be sharing this with you guys. Um, I don't want to spoil anything because we are, you're right in the middle of the, the class and trying to, you know, to understand the stuff that I'm going to be talking about. So I don't want to spoil by, you know, sharing everything straight away. But uh, after the, the second week, on the third week, I'm going to be sharing the entire library of videos that we have for the past two classes, so like May and June. And then you're going to be show, uh, seeing like how he sculpted Stan Winston and then Ray Harryhausen. So like the two full projects are here. And also includes like all the reviews that I did, you know, it's like the paint overs and everything. So, you know, it's like at least you have like a, a thing for comparison, you know, you can see, okay, now he's modeling a female, but what if I wanted to do like a, you know, it's like an older guy. And then in that, that case, you can just refer to this type of videos, you know, it's like, a, for example, showing how he sculpted the pores on the, on this guy, you know, like the, so all those, those things are going to be basically like available to you guys. And I don't have uh, I don't have like a, a limit of like for how long it's gonna be, but it's gonna be for at least one year available. But as long as I keep teaching those classes, my intention is to keep them in there, so you guys are gonna have access for a long time, hopefully. So uh, let's jump back here into the, the model itself. And uh, someone asked me to actually try to get uh, the model with the uh, with the reference like photos on the side, so you can actually see what I'm doing and how I'm comparing things. So uh, normally I have trouble with that because when I when I use my my ZBrush like on the side like that, I normally have a problem trying to select my brushes and everything's kind of hidden in there. But uh, I actually finally customized and I put a couple of brushes in here. I normally don't do that because um, I'm kind of like uh, I keep my interface pretty vanilla, you know, it's like very uh, like uh, original because uh, every time I go to those conferences and stuff, I don't want to you know it's like uh, force people to get all my uh, custom stuff. So I just like, I learned how to work with the very like, uh, you know, it's like no customization whatsoever. But in this case here, I'm just doing it so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm gonna get some pictures here. Um, and then uh, one thing that's cool about likeness is that, uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's this chase, right? It's how you're trying to find out uh, how certain forms work uh, uh, from like different angles, right? But the, the most common thing to find if you're looking for, um, you know, especially with the, uh, you know, it's like celebrities, you're going to see, for example, like a three quarters uh, picture and then a front view, right? Like in, in a side view sometimes if you're lucky. Um, but then uh, if you can find pictures, there are kind of like in unusual uh, 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 angles, like this one here, for example. So she's looking uh, slightly up. So this is very helpful, you know, it's like to help help to... To, uh, to solve some of the, the pieces of the puzzle, you know, because all those things here are going to have to try to figure it out. And if I have like the more information I have, the best, right? Obviously, she's looking up in here. And in this case here, uh, like this entire area is going to be different, right? Like uh, the eyes are shifting up. So this, the, the eyelids are going up, uh, both like the top and the, the bottom one as well. And uh, but at least for reference, like uh, the, you know, it's like the, the, the smile itself from this angle here is super helpful. So it's cool to have this kind of stuff. Let's see another one here. Uh, this one is kind of like a flat lens, right? So it's kind of like she, she got to, her face looks very flat in here. Um, so let's see if we can find, um, in this case here, I can actually make my lens flat on purpose, but I'm going to have to do this in Maya because like I said, I don't trust the, even the new uh, uh, lens for, um, for uh, ZBrush, the, the new camera system, I don't trust that much. And again, like this one here, for example, this is a perfect profile, right? So it's like not completely profile, but it's a good one. I can actually refer to the shape of her nose. She has a little bump in here, very slight, right? And then, uh, and then when I go to this one here, that's again like a, a sh uh, like a an angle that's not completely, um, you know, it's like the usual, right? Like so, I get that slightly turning up her face, 
so actually, actually, I can actually, uh, I can actually have a, a better idea about the shape of the face. Uh, when it comes to this area here, that's deceiving because there is part of the hair that's covering there. So it's almost like if I try to match that line in there, uh, I, it's going to be wrong because the the hair is covering part of it, right? So all those things here, you can you can never like refer to a single picture, right? You have to find multiple ones you can actually re refer to. And then when it comes to women, I mean, like when you're sculpting likeness, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? Like the, uh, if, uh, you know, uh, there's makeup involved, right? Like there's the eyelashes and the eyelashes, uh, sometimes like you get the ma mascara, right? So they get longer and thicker and then, uh, you know, it's like a normal eyelash would be naturally, right? Uh, so there's all those things to be considered, you know? It's like, so sometimes when I'm sculpting, if I'm, you know, it's like if I cannot get the, the proportions and things like that, like because of some some of those uh, elements, I can actually add like some uh, fake eyelashes, you know, it's like some uh, additional subtooling there, just some curved uh, eyelashes. I can actually paint the a little bit of the lipstick just to see the volumes and things like that, right? But uh, uh, again, like for this type of uh, referencing here for the profile, uh, the thing I can use is probably like the nose, right? I can tell that it already has to go up here. It's a little bit. Um, uh, was a little bit higher, right? But at the same time, there is the smile involved, right? So with the smile, what's happening here is that the the sides of the nose they are being lifted, right? So uh, it's it's that thing, you know, it's like it's using best judgment, I suppose. Uh, but uh, I can tell that this area here could go up around here. Let's see. So yeah, this area here could go up because that's not going to be change, uh, changing that much. It's like there's cart cartilage in there, right? So we're going to have like the, the th tiny little bony here, right here at this uh, beginning of the, yeah. So right here, you're going to have like this little, oh, this little piece of bone that's start, starting right here. And also like for the, for the cavity of the nose itself, if I draw it here over, uh, let's see. Oh. It's everything here now. So for example, like if I have the cavity of the, for the nose in here, it normally like ends around here. So it's not quite like in the corner. So it's around there. So it kind of curves around here. And then you have this little, this little dot right here. That's actually the base of the nose, right? So that's why, you know, it's like you get the little bump in there. Uh, it's a, it's a combination of things. It's a combination of, um, uh, let me get back here. Uh, it's a combination of you, for example, having the cavity starting around there. I think it's super strong, though. Let's get the, uh, let's see, like that. Still really strong. So you get the cavity. So sometimes when you see like an older person, you're going to actually see a little bit of this uh, form in there. Uh, you know, it's like it's almost like, uh, uh, depending on the person, sometimes you're going to see something like uh, this. Kind of like this a little bit thinner in here. It's kind of like goes, it's almost like going under in the uh, revealing a little bit of the, the bone in there. Uh, so that happens because, let's pull up a website here. Let's, uh, let's pull up a website, let's see right here. Let's try something like uh, uh, facial fat pads. Something like that. Let's see if we can. Yeah, so something like this. So uh, when you look at the young face in relation to an older face, uh, you're going to notice that the, uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, uh, you know, it's like a more visible uh, bone landmarks, right? In relation like uh, between a, a younger person and an older person. It's because like the, the fat pads in a younger person, they are all kind of like uh, close together. So they fill up everything. So basically like, you don't see any, uh, you know, it's like a, uh, unless it's someone very emaciated, right? That you're gonna see um, the, the 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 bone structure underneath and everything. Uh, you know, it's like if in a normally, you know, it's like a normal nutrition. I would say, you know, it's like you're gonna see something more like this. That's like everything is kind of uh, uh, together. But then as you age, all those things they start uh, kind of like uh, uh, deteriorating and actually shrinking, right? So you get all those uh, fat pads much smaller. And then you start revealing areas like the, the cheekbones, right? Like you see the zygomatic in there, zygomatic process and in, in, in the uh, um, orbital and things like that. You know, it's like you're going to see a lot of that. And even around here, although you don't have fat pads, 
this whole area here, I mean, like starts like getting the, the skin gets so paper thin, it loses the elasticity, right? And it starts revealing all the underlying structures. So uh, that's the, the cool thing about uh, doing like multiple ages. And I would say like um, uh, in, uh, in genres as well, right? Because the general is going to be actually interesting because you're going to be talking about the, the bone structure, right? And uh, in it, it's, uh, it's interesting when you start studying anatomy uh, for, the, for the skull, uh, there are things that are very peculiar about like men and women, right? Like so in a man, you're going to see uh, like the, the, the angle of the, the orbital bone here. So the cavity is going to be kind of like squarish. In the woman, is going to be a little bit more round. Uh, like the shape of the forehead is going to be a little bit more uh, straight like this, right? In a, in a woman. In a man, you're going to have like a lot of the brow ridge revealed. So it's going to be much more brow ridge in there. Uh, and especially like the angle of the, the maxillary here. Like in the man, you're going to see something like, you know, it's like kind of like going a little bit more straight down and then forward, right? Actually, a little bit kind of like a squarish jaw, right? And then the female, you're going to see something more like what we have here. It's a little bit more of a, you know, has a little bit more elegant angle like that. So there's a lot of stuff, you know, it's like a, it's very interesting to observe uh, when it comes to anatomy. And uh, yeah, indeed, we are different creatures, you know, it's like it's the uh, same species, different creatures, the same with the, any other species in the, in the, in nature, you know, it's like, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. Like you can, after you start studying this, you can actually detect, you know, it's like, uh, uh, like if you see like a skull, you can see like, okay, yeah, that's a female skull. So uh, it's interesting. Um, so let's, uh, let's go back here. I'm going to just start doing some tweaks and then you can actually follow me as I do it. We're going to just pull this. And again, like I'm actually trying to uh, not touch too much of this area here because as, as I said before, like there is a fresh facial expression. So like this area here is being lifted by all the muscles here, right? Everything is kind of being lifted a little bit. There's compression happening around here. So there's more volume accumulated. Although in this area here, uh, I should have a little bit more shallow. So let's just do, just like dig this a little bit more. And uh, I'm gonna introduce this line here. So it'll fold a little bit stronger. And then I'm gonna try to find one that has like an, a smile similar to this one. But you see like I started yesterday to actually I did these little lines in here just because I noticed that in her nose. But the, the other thing that's very interesting is that uh, the lining is gonna play a, a big role, right? So sometimes you see those lines in the actual portrait like that and then the tendency is to actually exaggerate it and really put them super visible. But uh, everything is about subtlety, right? Like if the lighting was in a different position, probably that line would be almost like completely invisible. So sometimes those lines are revealed and they hide uh, depending off the, of the, you know, the, the type of lighting you, you have in your scene. So you have to be careful with that. But uh, it's better if you, if you see the form, if it's a subtle form, it's better if you see it and you put it in there and then you remove later than not seeing the form at all. So um, I would say like you have to start looking uh, further than what you think you're seeing, right? Uh, it's, especially like when it comes to nose, uh, likeness is all about subtlety. And when it comes like to a, to a woman, I think uh, in, a, in kids, right? Uh, it's even more delicate, right? It's even more subtle, everything. So um, uh, when you look at the nose, for example, and you're trying to block the nose, uh, first, obviously, like, is to put the forms that I put yesterday, right? Like, you just get the bigger forms in there. But then when you start looking closely, you're going to start seeing there's a lot of subtlety. And especially, like, this little line right here at the tip of her nose, that uh, tells me a lot, too. For example, like, there's a little plane right here underneath, and then there's another one here that's defining the, the, the highlighting there, right there. So sometimes when I'm sculpting, what I do, I force those things, right? Like uh, uh, I get the uh, H-polish, for example. So I'm going to define that little plane right here very strongly. So just like mark it right there. So I know it's there. And, uh, and then the other one around there, instead of like using that, I can use just my regular carve brush in here. And then I'm going to define, let's say, just like do a little line like that. So I can actually know where I'm going to have to 
to play with, uh, you know, with, uh, with my brushes later. So let's see, let's just put a line in here and use a little age polish as well. And like I said, like uh, don't, don't be afraid of like uh, making things a little bit squarish because it's good to just like to visualize the planes and everything. And then later on, you can just like, you know, eliminate them. So her bump in there, uh, it's also very, very uh, subtle. So I'm gonna just be bringing it up a little bit around here. And, um, and it's hard for me to see in there. Let me see if I can do a, like a render um, under the shadows. Let's see, preview shadows, if I can just like reduce this all together. Not gonna do much. Uh, yeah, maybe like, let's see if I can just tweak this shader perhaps. Material uh, modifiers and then the ambient. Yeah, so I can see a little bit more in there, not much, but maybe I can put a light in there later. Yeah, skip that, that way for now. And let's just concentrate on this side here first. So up here. And um, again, like I cannot trust too much because she has a neutral expression there. So I'm just gonna try to introduce some of those forms but without going too crazy with it. Let me smooth it out a little bit. This is also very delicate in here. And probably I'm going a little bit too uh, high in there. I keep uh, trying to look for the brush in there. I forgot I have all of them down there. So I'm gonna just bring a little bit down like that, a little thinner. Although it's like raised, it, it seems like a, if I'm gonna raise, gonna raise the whole thing, but keep similar. Um, thickness or height. Let's run back a little bit. And I still have to define so many things here. I have to uh, establish this little plane underneath in here. Just do that. Again, like very kind of like, it's almost like, almost like architect architectural for now, right? As you're just like trying to establish those clean forms. The worst thing you can do is actually keep everything um, lumpy, right? Like you get like all those lumpy models. Sometimes you look at the, and all the forms are kind of like a mess, right? Like you cannot identify which one is which. Everything is kind of mushed together. And uh, so as you go, I mean, like you don't need to clean it up at all times. I kind of try to do that, you know, it's like as I go, I go a little bit further every time and I just like clean it up a little bit because I want to see the forms clean, uh, very clean. I don't want to uh, try to imagine how things are. I wouldn't know that if they are there. Uh, for the nostril, let's see if we can find another like online reference in here. Uh, it's another one that's deceiving as well. So uh, let's try nostrils like that. And uh, let's look from, from below. Like this is a little kid in there. We have like some adults, right? So uh, this is a good example actually. Uh, this is another thing that's very deceiving, right? Like because uh, uh, normally your filtrum, which is this uh, this uh, depth thing here that you have, right? Uh, it defines basically like the how this uh, form is going to end. So basically, like you have your filtrum in here, and then you see like it ends around there, like this curvature in there. And the uh, uh, thing that people do a lot sometimes uh, is that uh, uh, they they keep like the nostrils very short, so they end too uh, too soon. They don't go further enough up or down, right? You see how far they go? Like some people like with longer noses, right? They're gonna have like very big nostrils in here as well, uh, stretched. You can see like there's a deviant septum in there. That's basically what I have as well, right? So basically like a, I had a broken nose at some point and then I have like one nostril is much more closed than the other one. And it's kind of interesting because normally when you have this side closed, uh, that means that this side here is probably the one getting the least amount of air because it makes like a, an S curve, you know, so it kind of blocks that passage around the middle of the nose. And this one blocks the, at the tip in here, so it's kind of weird. But uh, let's, uh, let's put this one on the side here. I mean, like, although it's not her nose, we can actually use a little bit as a reference, you know, just to make, make a little bit bigger right there. Um, so we can actually, again, like there is a facial expression here, so it's gonna be different, but you see like I have like this kind of shape that looks a little bit simplistic in there. But uh, with the reference in there, it kind of helps me, right? Like, so reference is always good. So I'm gonna, first off, I'm gonna 
you know, it's like introduce a little bit more of a volume here just to, to break that uh, shape that looks like a, her nose, like is a long nose, which is not. And uh, I'm going to introduce a little bit more form here on the sides. And then when it comes to the top here, I'm going to make it maybe a little bit more round. Get this one a little bit back, make a nice little shape in there. And I'm uh, gonna make deeper as well because it's very shallow right now. I cannot do much with that. And uh, and now here we can actually build up this because at this point we are just like using the clay build up. So again, again, like you have your filtering in here around there, right? It's a little bit different shape now because of the smile, but I'm just gonna define it a little bit more like that. And then I can actually follow this line and then find out that I'm gonna to have to build this area here. So I'm gonna build some more different angles. Let's see. Just to get a little bit more of that. Then I'm going to make this area here a little shorter and thinner. Just blend it. And then as everything I do with my models, when I'm in this phase of like sculpting stuff, I'm not going to spend too much time in here. It's the kind of stuff I'm going to keep revisiting every couple of rounds, right? Like I go in circles uh, with my models. I do a little bit of work in something and I was like, okay, it's good enough. I move to the next one. And then I will go like, okay, this is good enough. I can see what, where this is going. And I just go to the next one and then I keep refining things, right? So for now, I'm just gonna keep the little form in there just as a reference and the, the shape is already much better than it was before. So I'm just gonna move on to the next uh, thing. Um, let's see like that. So I established a little bit of the plane underneath in here, right? Like I did before. And um, did a, a, some fixes in the nostrils in there. Established this little highlight in here that I saw in the picture. So basically like this is gonna catch the highlight. So I see that's the tip of the, you know, the cartilage in there. So funny like the way that, um, I think I'm gonna have to turn on my sculptures again. Uh, yeah, because it's, uh, this area here is actually not smoothing the way I was expecting. Let's try it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I turned off the sculpture so it's a little faster to sculpt without it, but I'm gonna need obviously for some certain areas. So let's, uh, now that we already look at her uh, nose from the profile, we introduce a couple of things in there, not many, but um, it looks a little better. So let's move on to like a front picture and let's uh, compare a couple of things. Let's see, let's find one that's not too distorted. Not this one, this one. Okay, so this one here. Okay, this one has a couple of different facial expressions, which is cool, but at the same time, it's, I think it's a little bit too much of a squint. I think it's too much of a squint here, especially like, a, yeah, this was at the Lucas picnic, uh, I would say like nine years ago. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, here's like in the sun, right? I kind of like it's, yeah. But um, uh, I think this one here is a little squinty, but at least for the smile. Yeah, you know what? I think the lighting is not helping there. Let's see if we can find a better one for lighting. I need lighting and a smile at the same time, which is gonna be tricky. Okay. Okay. Breastfeeding. <laughs> Our little baby. First baby. Okay. Let's go here. Yeah. So Our baby was like uh, two months old in here. Uh, okay. So let's go move to the side and uh, let's try to get some of that. She has, uh, her teeth is much longer than the one I have in there. So I, it might be helpful for me to actually uh, do a little tweak in that part as well. So let's go to the upper teeth and I'm just gonna make them a little longer. Oh, I keep clicking that. So I'm gonna extend the teeth. So basically like the teeth and the tongue and eyes is basically from the model I gave you guys. 
It's just I'm not using the head base mesh. I'm just doing from the sphere, but everything else is being used from the from the model from the models I gave you. So let's see. Let's get this one a little longer as well. That one, and then and obviously, like between facial expressions, right? Like there's a lot of subtlety, and sometimes it's just slightly different, and uh, you know, like enough to mess up. So. Uh, Let's try that. So yeah, her lips are interesting because uh, she doesn't have like a, a very well defined, you know, it's like at the end of the field trimming here, it's kind of like it's almost straight, but has a tiny little cut in there. So um, I'm gonna be doing that. So introducing a little bit of that shape. So let's see with my uh, carve is standard. So I'm gonna do this. Just gonna establish, actually switch subtool. Just establish a little bit of this, this line a little better. And then around here, just gonna cut it very slightly. And I'm gonna keep it straight again. Normally when I sculpt lips, I, I actually, if it's a neutral position, I normally add a tiny little line to help me out. And then I smooth it out later, which normally we have. So like around here, I just add a little line. It makes things look more natural like that, right? But in, the, in this case here, I mean, like there is a smile involved. A lot of the detail I would normally sculpt in the lips, especially the bottom lips, they're going to be almost like completely straight and smooth because of uh, naturally, you know, it's a, there's a stretch happening. So a lot of those wrinkles are being smoothed out. So I'm just gonna hide the teeth for now. I'm just gonna dig a little bit deeper in here so I can actually have access to everything. So the mask should work. Just gonna mask this. And all this stuff here that I'm doing today, uh, tomorrow we're gonna be projecting to an actual base mesh. And then uh, it's, you know, it's like it's an option, uh, optional step. You could, for example, potentially Z-remesh things in here. I can show you how to Z-remesh if you don't have a base mesh. Uh, or you can use the base mesh that I, I give to you guys, or you can actually use something else, you know. And, and when it comes to the reprojection itself, you can use the plugins you, you find more useful. In my case, I'm gonna project everything by hand because if you don't have the plugin, if you don't have the money to buy the plugin or the software, then you can actually know how to do that in ZBrush, which is basically doing everything manually. It's a, it's a little bit of work, but it's not terrible. You, I think like in 45 minutes to an hour, you can project everything and, uh, and then get done with that. Just gonna get this a little deeper. Get access to that area. So let's see. Ta -ta. Okay, so now I can see the teeth in there. So let's go back to her and take a look at the nose, if it's working from that angle, which is actually pretty decent, but uh, around the tip in here, I can tell that that area here, we're gonna have to carve it more towards the center, right? Because we did it from the, from the side, it looked like in a certain angle, but then every time you turn around, you're gonna see different things. So I'm gonna do that. And then the, the, the bottom of it, I'm gonna have to raise a little bit. And this is gonna be raised too. Down. It's a little bit thick that the form that I built in there. So I'm gonna have to actually smooth it out later, but it's, it's there for us to use as a, as a guide. And then uh, let's see from here. maybe introduce a little break around here, very slightly. And then this entire form here, we're gonna try to do like in one pass. So from here, you're gonna start like bringing it towards this area and smoothing it out. So you're gonna just smooth it out right there. This is when uh, the, the, the work starts getting a little bit more uh, careful, right? Uh, the, normally the way I, s I say those things happen is that uh, you're gonna spend probably like 10% of your time 
building like 95% of what you see, right? And then the other 90% of the time or 95% of the time to finish it up and build the, you know, the remaining 5% of what you see because it's, it, like I said, like it's deceiving, right? It's not like uh, uh, things are not there. It's, uh, they are all there and you have to figure it out uh, where to represent, right? So basically, like, uh, 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 you know, pick your battles, right? So you think it's worth like, a, you know, it's like going full on and detailing the entire like skin by hand or maybe like just creating something that's uh, more like an impression of it, you know? For example, like matching it like a one-to-one -one by looking at pictures, you know, it's like you're gonna match every single pore and wrinkle, probably not, right? But um, you're probably gonna have to create something that at, least, uh, that at least looks convincing, right? Something that, you know, it's like you can believe it's, uh, it's an actual person and uh, trying to escape from the, from the uncanny valley, right? That's very tricky as well. So uh, all that stuff comes with uh, when we're going to be talking about the shaders and everything you're going to be doing. If you use the right shaders, and I'm going to be passing basically like every single setting that I have. I, I promise like in those classes that I'm not going to hold back like in stuff I share. So, you know, it's like I have no problem with that. Uh, so I'm going to be showing like every single, you know, uh, uh, different uh, uh, tools and uh and parameters I have, like in my Maya scenes and everything, I'm gonna open everything. And then uh, I'm gonna introduce a little bit of that S curve in there as well. So around here, I can tell that goes down slightly. And then up again here. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be fun for you guys when we start playing with the shaders and everything, you know, it's like, a, uh, especially eyes, I think it's a very important part you know, it's like if you get the, the shaders for the eyes correct, you really can make it, you know, uh, the model, like a, make it or break, break your model, right? Uh, for example, like if you're using, if you're looking at a cartoon model, sometimes the cartoon is just like, it is what it is, right? Like it's just a cartoon. You're not going to uh, be impressed with how realistic a cartoon is. But, uh, you know, if the eyes actually look completely alive, uh, it's a much more appealing character than looking at some, you know, hyper realistic character in CG that everything looks correct, but then the eyes just don't look alive. And then he basically like misses that gigantic opportunity of uh, making, you know, something that's, uh, that people can connect, right? Uh, as artists, I believe uh, our mission is to actually first like tell stories, right? Like we all have stories to tell. We have like a many, many episodes in our lives that we can actually use to, to uh, tell the stories, right? Uh, and the story doesn't need to be like a full-on scene with multiple characters and everything, be too literal with the story. You can tell the story just by using like a, a single person and an interesting facial expression, you know. Uh, you can tell a lot about the emotion that's happening there. So uh, I think my focus is more towards that, you know. It's like it's to actually rep represents someone who has thoughts, right? Uh, that's, I think, when you break the Uncanny Valley is when you actually uh, represents someone who actually looks like a, uh, it's an alive being, right? It's not so much about like having every single proportion nailed down, but it's about uh, making some something that looks alive, you know, it's like creating life or, or emulating life in a computer. So, um, or in any media, right? Like you look at the Madame Tussauds um, uh, statues and, and, and sculptures like in, in, um, in wax, right? And uh, some of them are remarkably lifelike, right? Some of them you can tell that the, the likeness is not quite there. It's a little bit disturbing sometimes. It's like uh, it, uh, you can see like uh, the Uncanny Valley uh, also in, uh, in those uh, uh, traditional sculptures, right? Uh, they are not immune to that. There is, all, there is always a, a little bit of a battle between uh, uh, traditional and, and, uh, and digital artists. Not a lot these days, but used to be terrible. And uh, all is about like, you know, the, you know, the, everything that was, was done like a, a, a practically was better, right? And everything that's done in CG sucks. And it's so not true. I mean, like you, you start looking back at all those movies that we loved as kids. I'm, I was born in the 70s, like beginning of the 70s. And, um, and I was, would look all those, uh, watch those movies in the 80s. And that everything would look um, quite amazing, right? But then I, I sit down today to watch one of those. And it's, it's, it's cringe-worthy, right? Like, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's terrible. I mean, like, some of the effects are terrible. 
And then at the same time, you have like magnificent effects that still hold up, like the American Werewolf in London from uh, Rick Baker, right? Or The Exorcist or, or some of those movies, you know, classic ones done by real masters of the, the media, right? So it's very easy to bash, like, and put everybody in the same, um, uh, you know, the same boat and just, like, bash everybody, right? Like, it's an easy way to do it. But uh, you're going to find, like, a great traditional artist, and, and some of them are not great at all. Someone make, like, very average to not so good work. And you're going to see uh, amazing traditional art, uh, digital artists and some really bad digital artists as well. So it's, it's a matter of, like, uh, how much you're going to... Oh, look at that. That's a ZBrush bug that's just, it's like he crossed the entire face in there. Oh, I hate that. Look, I made some, some lines in there. Good thing that we are not um, like in an adv uh, advanced stage here at the Molly. I can just smooth it out. But I hate when ZBrush just like goes like this, whoop, right? It, it, that happens when you're using something with the, with the lazy mouse on. Without the lazy mouse, it doesn't happen. But with lazy mouse, sometimes just the sculpting is just like, does that. Like, ugh based on the angle you're sculpting, actually. But yeah, I mean, like, uh, I, the thing that I'm, I'm so, you know, happy about is, like, the whole Instagram thing, right? Which is, like, uh, everybody gets in there, and there's traditional and, and, and digital artists, and people are friendly, you know? It's like, uh, and you can just post stuff, and and, uh, and people are just, like, like it. They don't care about, the, uh, you know, how you sculpted it. They like the work. So that's the, that's a cool thing. I like a community like that, you know, it's like in, much better than, than Facebook sometimes, you know, it's like Facebook is a little bit too political in the, uh, in the, uh, I'm trying to stay away from politics at all. Uh, and then uh, in the, for the Instagram, I mean, like everything is just like awesome, right? It's just like, you just see a lot of uh, awesome art all the time, depending on who you're following off. Of course, like if you're following just celebrities, you're going to see a lot of boobage and, <laughs> and butts in there. But uh, if you're following artists, which is what I do, you know, it's like it's just like uh, like a daily dose of uh, of uh, inspiration every time. So yeah, it's awesome. She doesn't have a lot of this dimple in here. I actually added it just as a landmark, but I'm gonna start like smoothing it out. So basically, like, I'm gonna build it more towards here. So I'm gonna actually increase this little fold. I'm gonna bring it down slightly. And I have to be careful with that too, because uh, if I go too strongly with this, I can get the uh, heart to look much older, right? Like it starts adding stuff that, for example, like it's supposed to look like a stretched skin, and then all of a sudden it looks like uh, jowls, right? So I have to be careful about how I'm stretching this. And um, yeah, so let's see. Yeah, she, she she looks super young, man. And my wife is uh, she's forty five years old, and uh, she looks like she's her thirties. Unlike me, I look like I'm eighty. I'm kind of like one uh, one foot in the grave already. It's a rough life, man. All right. Everything is very subtle, right? Like it's a, that's why I use like intensity for my brushes, like a clay build up at three or sometimes even two. Uh, uh, because dude, like there's no way you're going to get like the subtleties just by using like a strong brush, you know, unless, unless you're really blocking like very primary forms. In that case, yes, you can actually go with the stronger one. But at this stage here, when you're actually searching for the secondary forms and refining things, yeah, it's just the, uh, doesn't happen uh and you see like her uh cheeks in here they're much more subtle than what i have in here they're kind of like pretty big so i'm gonna try to do a little bit of uh, reducing of that so probably like around here i'm actually trying to search for the silhouette right so around there so i'm gonna build a little bit here just to add a little bit more of this form here closer to the zygomatic bone and then uh, around here, I'm going to use this as a guide. And then around here, I'm going to just remove a little bit of this. It's going to reduce it a little bit. It's hard for me to see from that angle, but from here, I can actually see the, and then I can try to actually follow the form. Like 
this and just try to reduce it a little bit. And like I said before, yesterday actually, see there's a secondary form here. Just gonna dig it. If I carve it very strongly so you can see what I'm talking about, is this form right there. Right, you can see right there. It's very, very subtle, right? So when I marked it, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go like much more subtle than that. So I'm just gonna do that. So I, at, at least I can see where it is and then I can actually refine it. So around here, it's a lot going on, right? Because of uh, the facial expression there. So uh, one thing I'd notice here is that uh, probably this area here is gonna come a little bit closer to the middle and go down slightly. And then around here at the, the end of it, starts blending with the rest of the face, right? So I'm just gonna add a little blending around here. Then I'm gonna have, actually let me turn on my uh, sculptures because this area here got a little bit too low res and I want more resolution in there. Uh, the Sculpture Pro, uh, Pro is really cool. I love it for concept and stuff, but sometimes when you get uh, too, uh, too much into like detail like that, and then all of a sudden like it's not quite ideal, right? But um, I'm gonna try to do, go as far as I can with, uh, with the forms in here. And then obviously with the projection, I'm gonna do it carefully so I can actually get some of those forms. Uh, uh, I can reuse something of the stuff uh, I had in my previous model. So the whole intention here is uh, to actually create this model from scratch, right? Uh, at least like this first part. But then when it comes to the, to the next step, we're gonna be like projecting this into a, into a base mesh that I use for the other portraits that I already have. And because I'm doing that and it, it, they all share the same topology, I can reuse a lot of my, uh, of my uh, 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 specular maps and, and other maps that I have in there. I have a map that's just for the coloring of the, of the hair. And I have another one that's for specular and another one is for the bump height. Um, so all those, uh, those uh, maps I can actually reuse with her as long as I'm careful about how I'm moving things around. So for example, if I, I bring here like a Stan Winston, it's gonna be a totally different face. But if I do carefully enough to match the eyelids and you know, it's like nose and things like that, uh, I, I, sh I should be able to, to reuse a lot of stuff, you know? And like I said before, I, I, I'm gonna be doing everything manually, but if you guys uh, uh, have some software, I, it can help you with the reprojection. You, by all means, just use it, you know? Just uh, feel free to do it. Uh, let me just reduce a little bit more of this area here, so a little more. Started very puffy and then it's lightly, I just start like removing that form. And then around here, as you can tell in the silhouette in there, there's a little bit more of filling, right? So like uh, this area here from the profile there, see I'm trying to correct that silhouette. I'm just gonna be bringing it from here, just trying to get a little bit more of that. And then we're gonna, uh, you know, correct all the in-betweens, all the little forms and details we're seeing here. At this point here it would be use, useful, uh, useful if I had, um, uh, multiple subdivision levels, right? I could just go down and just fix my my uh, uh, primary forms in here. But in this case here, I don't have them. Uh, so I'm gonna be doing the best I can with this. And then obviously, once I have the topology in place, that's gonna be much more uh, interesting, nicer, right? So that should be a little bit better than what I had. Uh, when it comes to the chin, you see like her chin is much uh, uh, more pointy than what we have in here. So I'm gonna try to do a little bit of, uh, of that as well. So uh, for the chin is another thing that's deceiving, right? Because uh, if I draw it for you guys here, you're gonna see like in her case, I have a little bit of this form coming up, not this brush, this one, from here and cutting this way, right? Sometimes like you, you see like some people have this form coming like sometimes almost like all the way to the bottom and then splits. And then sometimes you're gonna see something more like this that's more defined, you know, so you're gonna have like a three forms. So you're gonna have the middle and then you're gonna have the sides in here, right? So uh, uh, for the chin, instead of like uh, that, a lot of people, they just like model a single form like that and they get done. And, uh, and it's a little tricky because sometimes it's, uh, you look at the picture and it looks like the, the chin is much uh, narrower than it actually is because people are actually seeing this form in here in the middle. 
the, the main form in there and it looks very thin, uh, narrow, right? Uh, it's because they're not considering that. But once you start adding those forms uh, or removing them, then you're going to have to compensate and make the, the chin a little bit uh, wider, right? So it's another little, uh, you know, trap in there for you. So many little traps, you know, it's like when it comes to likeness. But uh, I think the, the only way is to actually do it lots of times, and I have to do more times. I'm actually on the, the roll for the past, like, year and a half, I think, with those portraits. And every time I learn a little bit more, you know. So for the lips, I mean, like, uh, at this point here, you can tell that they're, they got super thick. I'm going to be bringing this up slightly, and I'm going to be filling this area as well. Because, uh, uh, you know, because there's a smile, this whole area here is going to be a little bit more puffed because it's actually pressing against the teeth. So I'm going to get a little bit more volume around here, and then I'm going to blend with, uh, with the lips in here. So I'm going to try to... A sculpture sometimes, like, you have to fight it at some point, right, if you're trying to, to get the things that you want. Like in this case here, I'm starting to fight with the with the crappy topology in there. It's not there's no topology actually; it's just a, te a tessellation, right? But um, yeah, just yeah. So get a little bit more of that, and then this angle here, try to get a little bit flatter at the top. It starts to look a little bit more natural. And then obviously you're gonna be building things as we go. And this whole session here, I mean, like, uh, it's recording right now, like, at the timeline. I can actually post this one as well if you guys want. But So you can actually see the evolution of the model as a whole. But, um, yeah, we'll talk about that. It's a very subtle form. I mean, like, I have to be careful about how much I'm going to dig in here. And everything I'm doing here, uh, it's like trying to use like clues from from the very subtle lighting and then and changes in forming here, right? As you can tell, there's this like I'm only only seeing this angle here, but I'm actually trying to use some deduction in here to try to you know to understand what's going on in there. Um, but obviously, like when you switch to different angles, you're gonna be able to see more. So there's another form in here. That I see that's this one right here. There's a little bit of depth in there. You can see the highlight. So that one gives me a clue that this area here, as with most humans, it just goes and makes a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a depth in here, right? So basically, like this line here, if I force it for you to see, so we get the little pillow, which is the again is the scientific name that I add, added to this part here. So that's called pillow. And um, and then there's pillow one, and then the pillow two, pillow three, pillow four. It's all scientific names. So basically, like from that pillow, it goes um, from here, right, and then wraps around like that, and you're gonna get this little line in there. But in this case here, I'm gonna just go very very subtle with it. Start going and wrapping around. And then here, I can actually add a little bit of that depth very slightly and then smooth it out. Let's get this a little bit more resolved too. Yeah, I'm starting to fight the little crazy polygons of the sculptress. Let's see what time that is. It's almost time for questions and answers. It goes fast, man, those classes go fast. You think that two hours is long? It's like, of course, like uh, it feels to me that it goes fast. But if you look back, like the content and the amount of stuff. Chris, sorry it, for coming late. Oh no problem. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. All right. So we're gonna be doing this. Just trying to prove a little bit of that indentation in there. Okay. So very subtle stuff. Uh, you know, it's like uh, at this point here, she lost a little bit of her lips, right? So you're going to have to try to recover that. Apparently, let's see if this distance here between the, the bottom of the nose and the beginning of the lip in here seems like it's much shorter than what I have here. So that gives me a clue that the lips, instead of like bringing the, the base down, right? Instead of like bringing this down, 
right here, closer to the teeth. I have to actually lift this area here. So we're gonna be bringing this entire area up. Carefully, so I don't mess up. And the line as well is a very, very kind of like straight line. So I have this one going down like that. I'm gonna to try to lift a little bit as well. And then this one basically disappears. She doesn't have that one because of the smile. And uh, I'm gonna bring this higher. And likeness, you're gonna see, for example, like uh, in the next uh, days and weeks, uh, I'm gonna be tweaking this forever, right? Like all the way to the very end, I'm gonna still be tweaking the, the likeness. It's something that almost like never ends, right? So don't get uh, uh, frustrated in the next couple of days if you're not getting the likeness correct, if you're doing likeness, uh, because I'm gonna be a, exactly at the same uh, spot with you guys. I'm gonna be struggling just the same, just like maybe, um, I have more experience with certain things, but I mean, this struggle is, is real and, and we all share it. I mean, like, uh, it's, it's not easy. I mean, like, I wish likeness was easy, you know? It's just not, I'm just gonna bring this. The struggle is real, man. All the portraits I have posted online, all of them, I'm not happy with any of them. I, I wanna go back and just like uh, re-sculpt a lot of stuff, you know? And, uh, but I, I try, I try to keep it like improving my shaders, like the, the, you know, the, the skin shaders and things like that. And then once I'm kind of like happy with them, then I want to do like an overall, uh, pass and try to get a lot of that stuff like improved, you know? So that's, uh, that's going to come at some point, but, uh, I'm going to need a little break from the classes to be able to do that. I'm actually going to Brazil in uh, in September for a couple of days, a conference in there. But uh, yeah, that's basically my break. It's between uh, August and uh, September, and um, and then October, November. I, my intention is to teach classes again, just to save some money for Christmas, I guess. But uh, I'm really, uh, you know, it's like a, I need a little break from uh, portraits. Actually, I need to do a little bit more of my uh, sketches. And because it's good to keep uh, yourself loose, you know, it's like with, uh, with your, you know, with your skills. And uh, although this is great because like it's this very uh, intense type of work, you know, it's like we, we do a lot of, um, uh, you know, it's like super detailed stuff. Like everything is, it has to be super careful, right? The way we do it. Um, it's not, uh, it's not like something that's completely freeing, right? Like it's something that, it takes time and it's slow. It's very slow paced. Uh, but um, but uh, the stuff that I like is actually the this kind of stuff uh, here. Uh, like uh, this stuff. Like uh, I post like since last uh, month, no, last year actually. This type of work, you know, it's like more like sketches like that. I love the portraits, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna be thrilled doing more portraits. But like, you know, this kind of stuff, it takes me like a few nights to do, like two nights like this, you know? So like uh, faster sketches and even like something like that, I wanna go back and pose this guy. But uh, so it's good to just like refresh your brain from time to time, you know? It's like if you do a couple of portraits in a row, you start gonna feeling a little bit, oh man, it takes a long time to get there, right? And then if you have like a nice render of uh, like a clay, a clay model, for example, right? You can, for example, get that out of your system, right? If you have an idea about modeling someone, you can do as a sketch. So you can get that out of your system without going to all the lengths of uh, creating a super realistic portrait, right? But I, I actually enjoy the portraits as well because it keeps my, um, my skills when it comes to uh, shading and, and lighting and stuff like that a little bit uh, sharper. So uh, I can actually use it to uh, render my clay stuff as well, you know, my pseudo clay stuff. So there's another form in here that's interesting because um, uh, you see like the cheeks in here, they look very simple, but uh, there is a little form in here for example, a little cavity that happens in here sometimes. And uh, I don't know if she has it in there, but I might actually find it. If I keep spinning the model, spinning the model, looking at more references, I might be able to find that kind of stuff. 